Hey, what's up, man? Nothing. We finally gonna open this thing or what? Dude, I've been waiting all week for this. You've been waiting all week? Yeah. Bro, this, I know what's in this, and I've been excited since I got it, and I've been waiting on this turd. But we're gonna jump into this. As promised, told you guys we'd open this up soon. Finally getting into it. Ooh. Oh, great. It's been saran wrapped to fucking hell and back. Yeah, what's up in here, man? Yeah. Hurry up. Get out, get out. Oh, yeah. No way. You can probably already guess what this is. Oh. Ooh, this is like Christmas, for real. There is a long story behind this board for me, and I'll dive into that in a minute, but I want to check it out first before I start telling you guys. Baron's gonna lock up. <laughs> That's sick. Even better, dude. Holy shit. This feeling right here, owning this, is literally 18 years in the making. I know what you're thinking right now. Why is he doing a full video on this? Just an average skateboard, right? But I got a fucking story to tell about it. So we're gonna do story time with Malcolm on this blue Rising Sun Muska board. But, yeah, look at it, it's like fucking sick. Old Ventures right there. Love that little sticker. And it came with the optional holes. It was in that transitional period when trucks were going, well, decks and trucks were going from bolts right there to back further. Which I heard somebody say, I never knew the reason back then, but somebody had mentioned that the reason that they started pulling the holes back some was because if you nose slid with it right there, it would start to loosen your hardware. And that apparently is the reason why they changed that. Cool little piece of history. But let me talk about why this board is special to me. And that is because when I first started skating in like 2001, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. So I had the first pro board I ever saw was World Industries board, it was set up, it was sick. And a buddy tried to sell it to me for $40 and my deadbeat dad wouldn't give me the money for it. And so that slipped away and I found one on eBay similar to it and bought it. This one was the second board I'd ever seen and it's the exact same story. Guy wanted to sell it to me. He wanted to sell me this Chad Muska board and a grind box for 40 bucks. I mean everything was legit on it, $40 and even to this day that's a fucking dumb good deal for like a used skateboard. So I told my dad, I was like, hey dad this dude wants to sell me a whole complete and a grind box, everything I need to skate for 40 bucks. That's a fucking steal. I gotta get it. And he was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Friday when my paycheck comes, I'll get it for you. And then Friday comes, he doesn't mention a thing. Of course, you know, good father. And so I asked him, I was like, dad, what's up with that board though? Can I get that? And he was like, uh, next week. I can't this week. And I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So next week comes, I asked him like, dad, can I get that fucking board or what? And again, no, still wouldn't get it for me. I never got the board because my dad's awesome. One of the best dads in the world. And now, here I am, 18 years later, and I finally have this board, this setup. And it's just like, that nostalgia is what drives me to buy shit like this. Like, it's crazy to be holding this now. 18, 19 years ago, I was trying so hard to get this board for 40 bucks and own it and skate it, because it's fucking sick. It's the Muska Rising Sun. Who doesn't love this graphic? And I couldn't get it. And now I finally found it. it. Cost a little bit more than $40 though. But it's so fucking like, it's so great owning this now. It's insane. Like everything's the same. It had Ventures. It had Spitfires pretty identical to this. Not this exact setup though. But it had like, I forget. I think it was like the Gas Can Spitfire logos all the way around if I remember correct. Or it had like a train rail. I can't remember. But it was similar to this. And so this board is essentially the fucking same thing as back then. And it's just, dude, it's nuts to hold this. Like, it's crazy. All you old heads will know the feeling that I'm talking about. And you young guys probably won't yet. But 20 years from now, you guys will know exactly what I'm talking about. And you'll be like, god damn, Golden Air Collector was really fucking getting that nostalgia on. 
This is insane though. Like I fucking, oh, I'm so fucking glad. These bitches go for a lot of money. I managed to get this for less than what I thought I'd be able to get it for, which is insane. It's a little, little beat up, a little tattered, but the fucking one I was trying to buy was like this too. So that's why it doesn't really bother me now. I like it like this. It like for real though, it feels like I'm holding the actual board that I tried to get back then. But that's the end of that story, man. I know it's probably lame to some of you guys, most of you probably, but some of you will know what I'm talking about, man. It's just nostalgic, dude. It's fucking great being able to own this. It's wild. That's it, though. Thank y'all for watching my story time. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Maybe there'll be some more of that. I got a lot of stories to tell. We'll see how the feedback goes on this video, though. Most of y'all probably hate it, but whatever. I don't care, man. Screw y'all. This is awesome. Let me know in the comments, dude. Do y'all have any stories like that? Anything crazy, you know? Something that y'all been looking for? Let me know. Let Brandon know. Let us know. We'll reply back to you. It's crazy, though. The Chad Musker Rising Sun is finally mine. 18, 19 years later. But yeah, thank y'all guys for real for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. All the good shit. And tune in next time for some more shit. We'll see y'all later, though. Peace out, guys. Dude, this is fucking dope, man.